A warm greeting? Today is Thursday, August 29, 2024. This is meteorologist Ruben Garcia speaking. As of the time of recording this video, it is 5 p.m. local time in the Eastern Caribbean, where we are closely monitoring the development of a disturbance associated with a tropical wave and the intertropical convergence zone. In this video, would like to provide an update on the forecast for the possible development of a tropical depression over the coming days, as this system moves westward and eventually reaches the waters of the Eastern Caribbean Sea. Today there have been no significant changes in the forecast. Here in the infrared satellite image, we can see that the disturbance is generating thunderstorms that are currently still disorganized, so the organization process of this disturbance should be somewhat slow over the next three to five days. Eventually, when it reaches the Caribbean Sea, it could encounter very favorable conditions for development and strengthening. And although the global models still lack consensus on how strong it could become in the Caribbean Sea, I personally believe that conditions are quite favorable for at least the passage of a tropical storm over the Lesser Antilles. Let's now analyze some indicators that lead me to believe that conditions are favorable for the development of a tropical depression. First, remember that sea surface temperatures are extremely high across this area, particularly over the Eastern Caribbean Sea, where they are currently at record levels according to our historical data. Over the next few days, this disturbance will be moving over increasingly warm waters along its path. And not only are the sea surface temperatures very hot, but these warm waters extend well below the surface. See this graph, which shows that at least down to 100 feet in depth, temperatures range from 29 to 30 degrees Celsius along the path of this disturbance as it approaches the Caribbean. There is a lot of accumulated energy in this region, which this disturbance could be tapping into to become a tropical cyclone. On the other hand, notice that the region remains with a very humid atmosphere, related to the inner tropical convergence zone. It seems that dry air will not be an impediment to its development either. Additionally, wind shear remains very low across this sector, between 5 to 10 knots. Moreover, notice that an anticyclone is developing over the disturbance, which can help keep this wind shear low as it approaches the Caribbean. Even so, when it approaches the Eastern Caribbean, it is projected that wind shear may increase slightly from the north, although it doesn't appear to be strong. For these reasons, I think this disturbance has good chances of cyclonic development as it approaches the Caribbean Sea, despite some models indicating difficulty in development. Also, remember that we have discussed over the past few days that global models sometimes have difficulty assimilating this type of development. So I suspect that in the coming days, the models will have a better outlook and will most likely project a stronger system than they do today. This is why it is important for residents of the Lesser Antilles, Puerto Rico, and the Dominican Republic to remain attentive to its evolution. In the long term, it could pose a threat to Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba. The important thing is that the National Hurricane Center maintains a 40% chance of development over the next 5 to 7 days, and we will be watching to see if the development chances increase at 8 p.m. today. We will continue to monitor updates from these bulletins. Let's review what the global models show in the afternoon runs today. Let's start with the American model, the GFS, which surprisingly in the midday run does not develop this disturbance before it reaches the Caribbean region. In its latest run, it shows a strong tropical wave crossing the Lesser Antilles during the morning hours on Thursday, marking a significant difference from what it projected in this morning's run. Here you can see that the GFS model is being quite inconsistent in the location and intensity of this disturbance. For example, in this animation, we can see the different projections of the latest runs, and notice that the model is very inconsistent in the intensity and location of this cyclone for next Thursday. There is a lot of uncertainty in the projections of the American model. The European model, although a bit inconsistent, at least continues to project the development of a tropical cyclone in the midday run today. It has a tropical depression or tropical storm moving over the eastern Caribbean Sea during the afternoon hours on Tuesday. But see in the next animation that it also shows inconsistency between the runs. On the other hand, we have the German model, which in its latest run developed a tropical storm over the eastern Caribbean Sea as it moves towards the west-northwest. In general, that is why all the Greater Antilles and Lesser Antilles should continue to monitor the progress of this disturbance. The different scenarios related to this disturbance can be seen clearly in the ensemble members of the European model. Some members have a weaker system moving faster and eventually reaching the Western Caribbean region, near or over Jamaica and Cuba. Meanwhile, other members have a slightly more rightward or northward track, passing much closer to Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti. We also have uncertainty regarding its intensity. While some members show a major hurricane, others keep it as a tropical storm. There is really a lot of uncertainty with this forecast. At least for now, we can anticipate that some of the islands in the Lesser Antilles will be affected by a strong tropical wave, or possibly a tropical depression or tropical storm. Really, in the rest of the Caribbean, including Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic, 
Haiti, Jamaica, and Cuba, we must closely monitor how this disturbance evolves. The faster and stronger it is, the more likely it will affect Puerto Rico and the Dominican Republic. Whereas, if it remains weaker, it may travel further west and eventually pose a threat to Jamaica, Haiti, and Cuba. Well, that's all for this forecast update. I will continue to be vigilant for any unexpected changes to notify you. Most likely the next video will be recorded during the afternoon hours of tomorrow, Friday. It's important to check if you're subscribed to my channel, so you don't miss any videos. Go to the bottom of the video, click on the red button that says subscribe, and then click on the bell so you get notifications when I upload new videos. Well, that's all for now. I hope you all have an excellent night.